Hi everybody, this is Miss Nicole from Bloomfield Public Library and in today's edition of Science Bites, I'm very excited to finally be able to do an experiment that I've seen online but have never been able to do as a library program because it takes quite a bit of time to do at home. Um, it's very simple but you do have to have some patience. We are going to do the rubber egg. I'm very excited to share this one with you. It was very simple to do, which I love. And we saw some, and we see some really cool results. So let's get started. Okay, we only need a few supplies for this experiment. The first thing you need is some sort of a see-through glass jar or, or glass. I'm gonna use this kind of a glass. You could use a mason jar. You could use a shorter glass. As long as you have enough room to fill it with vinegar or put a good, num a good amount of vinegar in it, enough so that an egg would be covered. And that leads to our second ingredient, which is vinegar. I made sure that I bought a big container of vinegar because with this kind of experiment, you also wanna have a lot of spares. You wanna do more than just one egg because we're gonna to have to let the egg sit in the vinegar for one whole week, seven days. And you don't wanna to get to the end of that seven days and suddenly find out that you've accidentally broken the egg or done something and then have to wait another seven days for something. So when I did my experiment, I did it with white and brown eggs and I had a couple of bowls where I put some extra eggs. So I had bowls that I put two or three eggs in each, you know, three white, three brown, and I also covered them with vinegar. So I had some backup eggs. Um, but basically all you need to do is put this vinegar in the glass and then plunk the egg in. Now I will say that sometimes you learn things the hard way. And initially when I did this, I put the egg in first, which was a little difficult because the glass is tall and my hand is not so tiny. So I didn't wanna drop the egg in because it might break. So I, I came up with a system where I delicately pushed it in with a spoon without realizing that of course, if I had just put the vinegar in first, I could have very easily plunked the egg into the glass. So I do recommend putting the vinegar in first. So all we need to do, I'll do it right here with you. Open up my vinegar. All we need to do is fill our glass with vinegar. That's probably plenty, that's plenty tall. And now I'm gonna take a brown egg. I actually liked the brown eggs better because it's easier to see when reactions start to happen, but you can do it with both eggs. Um, so then you're just gonna take your egg and put it in your glass. And pretty much right away, you're gonna start to see some bubbles already forming in the glass. And what's happening here is we're getting a reaction between an acid and a base. And what that means is that we have our vinegar which is our acid, it has acetic acid in it. It's mostly water with a little bit of acetic acid in it. And our egg has a shell that's made entirely, entirely of calcium carbonate, and that's a base. So when the two get together, the reaction creates a release of carbon dioxide. That's what all those little bubbles are. Just like when you're opening a bottle of soda, you see that release of all those little bubbles. That's also carbon dioxide. So right away, we see that dramatic reaction. Now, I'm going to show you some still images of my glasses over the seven days when I let the eggs sit. The most dramatic reactions for me happened in those first few days. There were a lot of bubbles initially, and then within the second day, I started to see a sort of scummy layer that, that was on the top surface of the vinegar. Some people online have said that um, you wanna scrape that scummy layer off and change out the vinegar and make sure it's clear vinegar, but that's optional. And most people do agree that's optional. I, did, I didn't bother with that, I just let my eggs sit. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And I got the same results as everybody else online. So you can change out the vinegar if you want. If you wanna scoop out that scummy stuff and take a closer look at it, you can. That's something that won't hurt the experiment, won't hurt the egg, won't hurt the results. So now all you need to do is let those eggs sit for seven days. 
Um, seven days is really the maximum amount of time. I let mine go a few extra days because I needed to wait till I had some free time to film. But, um, and it didn't hurt the experiment at all. Some people do it in less than seven days and that requires a little more um, playing it by ear and seeing if things are ready to um, pull out of the vinegar. So I would recommend just letting it sit in the vinegar for seven full days and then the fun begins. So here I'm gonna show you a videotape of what I'm gonna do with the egg once I pull it out of the vinegar. You wanna bring it over to your kitchen sink or your bathroom sink, and you're gonna start a very gentle stream of water, not a big full force stream of water, but a nice little trickle of water. And you're gonna very gently wash that egg off under the water, because there's still gonna be a little layer of like a scummy leftover layer on the eggs that you can sort of wash off so you get your your nice clear rubber egg. Um, so you can see that I'm washing it off right now very carefully, getting off the last remnants of, in this case it was a brown egg, so you can see the little remnants of the brown shell, the last of it coming off. And then I gently just rolled it on a paper towel to dry it off. It almost air dried on its own instantly, but I did roll it on a paper towel, a paper towel just to um, fully get it dry. And now you can take a close look at your rubber egg. Some people call this the naked egg. I've seen it online also as the rubber egg because it is a little squishy right here. You don't wanna to squeeze too hard or you're gonna see another kind of dramatic result. Um, you can see if you start to rotate it in, if you start to rotate the egg, you'll see the yolk floating around inside. So right now what we've done is we've sort of rubberized the membrane that's normally inside the shell of the egg, but the egg itself is still liquid inside the egg. Now, if we compare the size of this egg, this feels bigger than normal, if we compare the size of this egg to an original brown egg, we can see that the rubber egg is definitely bigger. The reason for this is there was a process called osmosis that took place. And osmosis is basically when certain things can move back and forth between a membrane. So we have the egg's membrane, which was that layer that's right under the shell of the egg. And inside our egg, our original egg, we had mostly protein with a little bit of water. And our vinegar, our vinegar is mostly water with a little bit of vinegar. So what happens is the water wants to keep passing between that membrane back and forth until it feels like it's kind of stabilized and it's equal. It's an equal amount of water inside the egg and outside the egg. So that's why it starts to swell. It's taking on a lot of extra water. And there's also another way for us to test this out and we'll get to that in a little, a little bit of time. But first, I wanted to show you one of the fun parts about the rubber egg. Now, as the name impl implies, a rubber egg can actually bounce a little bit like a rubber ball. Now you wanna try, with the first time you do this, you wanna make sure you do it very gently and you're not gonna do it from a height of like two feet. You're gonna do it from a height of like an inch or so. All right, and I'm gonna show you exactly how, I, how you should do it the first time around to make sure you don't burst your egg before you even get to see it happening. So the first time you wanna bounce the egg, remember it's only gonna be from about an inch or so above your plate. So here you can see my rubber egg and I'm just gonna lift it maybe, maybe not even a full inch, maybe a half inch off the plate. And you can see that it's actually bouncing. Now if I lift it, you can try lifting it up a little bit more each time. Don't do it too dramatically at first. So now I'm lifting it more like two inches off the plate. Maybe more like three or four inches off the plate. And now I'm gonna come up this high. I'm not, whoo, I'm gonna tilt my camera back a little bit. Now we're coming up quite a bit higher. And there we go. Now my egg has smashed. Now what's really interesting here is the membrane. We can see mostly the liquid egg, but this here is the membrane. This is what 
the water was actually passing back and forth between. This is where our osmosis was happening. And this is the only thing that was holding in all of this liquid egg right here. This liquid egg with all of its extra water. Now, I promised earlier that there was another way that we could actually see osmosis happening and understand the process of osmosis with that egg membrane. And again, it's a very simple, simple procedure, a very simple test. So what we're gonna do is again, take a clear empty glass and this time you're gonna fill it about maybe halfway full of corn syrup. And I have light corn syrup here. I'm not sure it matters so much if it's full corn syrup or light corn syrup, but corn syrup is mostly sugar, a mostly sugar solution with a little bit of water. And now we're going to take our egg, our rubber egg, which is mostly, <laughs> has a taken on a lot of extra water now, and we're gonna plunk it right down into that corn syrup. And then it, within a day, what we see is that that water has come out of the egg and is now sitting on top of the corn syrup. So again, with osmosis, we now have a lot of water in our egg and only a little bit of water in our corn syrup. So again, that membrane wants to, through osmosis, wants to stabilize things. So water is gonna be passing back and forth between that membrane. And in order to make sure we have as much water outside the egg as inside it, we get that layer of water sitting on top of the corn syrup. That's the water that's actually come out through that membrane, through that egg membrane, into the glass. That's pretty cool, right? So now we can also look at the egg now that it is deflated a little bit and some of that water has come out. Now for this part, what I'm gonna use is just a, a good old spoon and I'm gonna gently scoop that egg out of the corn syrup glass. And I don't wanna dip into the corn syrup. I'm trying to get just the egg out of the liquidy water part. And I'm gently gonna lay it down on the plate. And now you can see even more our layer of water on the top of the corn syrup. But now let's take a look at our actual egg once it's been deflated a little bit. It's still a little rubbery, but you can actually feel the egg yolk inside now. We're a lot closer to the egg yolk. Like that. Now this would still be delicate. This still might break. So you wanna be careful with it. But you can take a nice close look at the egg itself this way too. And that, my friends, is the rubber egg or the naked egg experiment or demonstration. If you were gonna do this for a science fair project, you might want to have um, a control set up for your experiment. So at the same time that you're soaking your egg in vinegar, you might wanna also have one egg just sitting in water. And you might wanna have one egg sitting in juice and see if that makes any difference. You could also take the osmosis process a little step farther. And once you've, you've got that liquid from the egg, you might try ha putting a little food coloring into the water and seeing if that colors the inside of the egg if you let it sit for a couple of days. Because again, with osmosis, that water is passing back and forth through the membrane. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this demonstration and experiment and um, hopefully you'll get a chance to play around with it a little bit more. Um, but for now, that's all for this edition of Science Bites. Hope we've got a lot of fun programs coming up this summer, too. We're going to do some rockets. We're going to do some rock candy. We're going to do some candy science. I can't wait. So until next time.